Welcome to Beat the CPAT. This workout is part one of a four week Beat the CPAT workout program. Here is the CPAT workout in written form. It's recommended that you follow along with video, but if you can't, simply print this out and take it everywhere you go. Hi, I'm Tom Stroop. Welcome to the CPAT workout. Think of the CPAT workout as an obstacle course because that's exactly what it is. Eight obstacles that have to be done in under 10 minutes and 20 seconds. I'm a five-time world champion in SWAT international competitions and I have the current record for running the SWAT obstacle course more consecutive times than anyone. And I was good at running the obstacle course for one reason. I ran the obstacle course as often as I could. I created the CPAT workout with one goal in mind, to help you pass the CPAT test. So to get you ready for the CPAT test, I have developed eight very specific exercises. These eight exercises are specifically designed to strengthen your muscles increase your stamina, and create a positive can-do mindset. By design, these exercises are longer in duration and higher in intensity than the actual test. The workout was intentionally designed this way so that when you do take the actual CPAT test, it will seem easier than the workout. Feel free to adjust the intensity of any of the exercises depending on your fitness level. However, do not adjust the times even if you have to stop and rest while the clock is still ticking. It's very important to stick with the time limit because that is where you're going to improve your stamina. Give it your best effort. Remember, this is more than a workout. This is your future. If you have any questions, please contact me at pwrtraining.com and congratulations on your future career as a firefighter. Welcome to the CPAT workout. This workout was specifically designed to physically prepare you for the firefighter candidate physical ability test. However, it is your responsibility to find out the exact rules and requirements for your physical entrance exam. The rules for the CPAT test are very specific and must be followed exactly. Here is a list of the equipment you will need for your CPAT workout. You will need a weighted bag with backpack style straps and interchangeable weight so that it can meet you at your fitness level. A kettlebell, two dumbbells, a padded mat, and a sturdy box. The CPAT workout program is four weeks long but can be repeated as often as necessary. There is a one day break between each CPAT workout and the CPAT practice test. It is recommended that you take a two day break after the CPAT practice test before you start the next week's CPAT training. Feel free to train any way you want on your days off, but keep in mind you are training to pass the CPAT test, so train accordingly. This first exercise is called the box step. It's three minutes long. You'll need a weighted sandbag and a sturdy box. Try to keep the weighted sandbag on for the entire duration of the workout. Go at any rate you want, but this is called a ladder technique. It's one box step, one squat. Two box steps, and two squats. Then it's three box steps and three squats, etc. Keep increasing your amount for the full three minutes. I'm using about 55 pounds in my sandbag, but feel free to use any weight you want, whatever is comfortable for you. But remember, on the three minute step test, you will be wearing 75 pounds. Get in the habit of keeping your hands down by your side because on the stair step test you're not allowed to touch the machine. Remember, proper form is important because this is the CPAT workout and we're trying to strengthen the muscles and increase your cardio conditioning. So go as fast as you can but keep proper form. When you step up onto the box, step all the way up. When you step down, step all the way down. And when you do your squats, drop your hips at least parallel with your knees.
It's important to pace yourself when you're doing this workout. The machine is only going to go about one step per second, so you can't run on the step machine. The idea is to strengthen the muscles and keep your breathing down as much as you can. Remember, you're adding one rep to every box step and to every squat for each set. I think I ended up getting a total of seven each. You can stop the tape as long as you want in between these exercises, but remember, don't stop the tape during the practice test. Exercise 2 is a knee to standing and dumbbell rows, each done 45 seconds back to back. Keeping your shoulders back and your head up, lower yourself down to one knee and then to the second knee and then stand back up. This really works well on your glutes. It's real important that you keep moving even when you get tired because that's what helps you develop your stamina. Staying on one knee the entire time, grab a dumbbell in each hand and pump each arm vigorously, just as if you were pulling a hose. Keep in mind that we're doing each of these exercises a lot longer time than it will take you when you're actually doing the test. The idea is that when you do the test, it's actually easy. Exercise three is equipment carry. Carry something at least 30 pounds in each hand for 150 feet. On this equipment carry, it's actually best just to grab something and carry it. So grab two of anything. I'm grabbing these water cans that weigh about 40 pounds a piece and we're gonna walk 150 feet. You cannot run during this equipment carry, but you can walk fast. So keep the weight up high and keep moving. This is a real good time to gather your thoughts and get ready for the next movement. Half of the battle of this test is in the mind. Exercise four is a standing dumbbell press. Use as much weight as you can without compromising your form. For the ladder raise and extension, I use two 25 pound dumbbells, but use any weight you're comfortable with. But grab one dumbbell in each hand and what you want to do is turn your palms towards your face at the bottom and turn your palms away from your face at the top. It's more ergonomically correct and it's a real good pump on your shoulders to simulate the ladder raise.
Don't even keep a rep count. Just keep going the entire time. As you can see, I'm really feeling these and I'm starting to slow down substantially near the end. But just keep going. For exercise five, I use a 30 pound kettlebell. The exercise is done for one minute. I like using a kettlebell for this movement, but if you don't have a kettlebell, feel free to use a dumbbell or anything you can grab and move from side to side. On this movement, I'm using a 30 pound kettlebell, but feel free to use any weight you want. Remember, on the test, you'll be using a 10 pound sledgehammer. When you're doing this movement, make sure you turn your shoulders all the way from one side to the other. Don't just drop the weight from one side to the other, almost as if you've got a 2x4 tied to your shoulders and they both move in unison. That way you get the full twist of the torso and strengthen your core. Remember, you're simulating a sledgehammer swing, so take it fully from one side to the other with a full rotation, concentrating on tightening your core. Exercise six is hand release push-ups and spiders. Six sets of 15 seconds each. This next exercise is 90 seconds long, but it's broke up into increments of 15 seconds of two exercises. The first exercise is a hand release push-up. You can do these with your knees on the ground or your knees off the ground, but think about crawling and actually push your entire body off the ground at the top. This movement can be a very challenging movement, so do as many as you can. And remember, your goal is to keep improving. Don't quit and keep moving. Try to release your hands at the bottom. That way you get the full effect of pushing your body off the ground. If you find these spiders too difficult, just hold yourself in a plank position with your knees up or knees down and tighten your core. I found myself pretty tired at this point, but remember the idea is to keep improving with every workout. Exercise 7 is squat to a reverse lunge. I grabbed two 25 pound dumbbells just to add extra weight. On this one, I've got an extra 25 pound dumbbell in each hand because you really want to strengthen your quads and your legs. Because remember, you're going to be pulling a 165 pound mannequin. Be careful to lower yourself into a kneeling position. Don't just drop straight down.
when you step back for your reverse lunge, make sure you keep your shoulders back. That way all your weight is centered over your hips. When it starts to get challenging, just like this one is for me, one of my tricks is that I think about right where I'm at. I do not think ahead. I focus only right where I'm at. Exercise 8 is a kettlebell swing. It's for 90 seconds, and there is a learning curve on this, so start off light and work your way up. The kettlebell movement is actually a very controlled movement. When the weight comes down, you straighten your hips out as you push forward and raise the weight over your head. Lower the weight, just don't let the weight drop. If you have any questions about a kettlebell swing, there are lots of great videos on YouTube. Keep your elbows bent and keep the momentum going up and away. Remember, our goal is to make this workout harder than the actual test. So that when you take the test, the test seems easy. Great job in the workout. Remember, stay focused, keep your eye on the prize, and your goal is to improve every time. See you next time. For more awesome workouts, go to pwrtraining.com or PWR Training YouTube channel. Have a great workout.